Hey, hello everyone. My name is Sadal Pajapati, and this course will be a complete end-to-end -end project of Azure Data Engineering. So, if you are fresher or if you are beginner in this course, please take this course, and then you can learn a complete process of Azure Data Engineering. I will be not telling you only the basic stuff of Azure Data Engineering, like how we can create a COVID project, how we can just pull the pipelines and other stuff. In this video, in this series, I will be telling you everything about the Azure Data Engineering. I will be telling you how we can pull the data, how we can create the pipelines, how we can schedule the pipelines, how we can dump data into Azure SQL databases, how we can create a Power BI report out of Azure Data Lake, out of Azure Synapse. And then I will be also sending some emails to end users, to stakeholders to see the data. Okay. And after that, what I will be doing, I will be creating a CI CD pipelines to deploy the code from one environment to the another environment. And, and also I will be creating some uh, utility to check with, to check the quality of the data. So if you are facial, please take this course. It is, it's gonna be very amazing course and you will learn a lot of things. I will I will be uh, telling you every each and concept of real time scenarios. I will not telling you what is a, what is already present over the YouTube or over the internet. So this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be complete a new new uh, type of project. Okay, where you will learn a lot of things. And hello, let's get started. First, we will see what is the architecture, what are the requirements, and what tools which we are we are gonna use. Okay. So here, if you can see this, uh, we have this architecture, okay, and you can see we have sources. So sources, we have CSV files, we have SQL tables, we have APIs, we have present sub, some PDF files, and then we have some Excel files. So if you can see this CSV, if you can see this CSV, CSV file will be stored in Azure Data Lake. Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Okay, we will be sourcing these files from the Azure Data Lake Gen 2. And these files will be stored in the in the uh, zip format. Okay, zip folders. So first we have to extract those files. And then we have to load it. Cool. Then you can see we have this SQL, right? So here we will be having some tables which is stored in the Azure SQL database. Cool. And then we have APIs, you know what is API, API is hosted on cloud. Okay, so we will be fetching those records from the API. And all these three things, right, all these three things will be copied, will be copied from the copy activity using Azure Data Factory, which is this, okay. Azure Data Factory is kind of easier tool with the help of which we just source the data. And after sourcing all these three data, data type, Okay, we will be putting into this raw data lake. Raw data lake, it means Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Cool. And apart from this, if you can see here, we have some PDF files, right? So PDF files, we will we will source it with the help of Python script. And we will be using Azure Databricks only to source the PDF files. And same thing we will be doing. We will be saving, uh, saving the PDF files also in the in the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 in the form of data. Okay, the, the file format should be data only. Cool. And you might be seeing that we I have written here flights, plane, airport, cancellation, airlines, unique carrier, and so on, so on, right? So what we will be doing actually, see, suppose we have this CSV file, right? So CSV file means flight data. You can consider this is flight data. So what I will be doing, I will be copying this uh, into this flight folder. So inside flight folder, I will be having the data folder, the data files on the level. Correct. You might be thinking that see, we have some set of uh, set of data which is coming daily. On daily basis, we are getting the files, right? So in the raw layer, what we should do actually, we should store at least seven days of data or thirty days of data. We should not override the data every time. So we should append the data. So that's why what I'm doing, I'm creating a folder like flights, plane, airport, cancellation, and so on. And I will append the data on daily basis. Like I will be, uh, I will be uh, uploading new file based on, based on a date. Okay. 
so that you know in future if something wrong happen then i can go back and check what is present in the raw raw folder or raw data lake cool after that what you can see that what i will be doing i will be uh, i will be reading uh, this raw data lake into into a data breaks okay and i will be cleansing it so see some files might have issues in data type might have some nurse value might have some different different things right so i will be solving all those things i will be cleansing the data and then what i will be doing i will i will be creating a mart mart means i will be creating a dimension table out of my raw data or cleanse data then i will be creating fact tables also cool based on the business logic or the requirements what we actually have it then after doing this i will be saving those files those tables into this data lake okay which is in the clans the uh, clans container or we can see in the mart container after that see this is kind of business thing right now we have to push only that data which has to be exposed to the end users okay so i will be creating a publish a layer okay with the help of this azure data lake only and i will be saving those data which is very useful which is very useful for the end users i will be saving into the into the publish container or publish data lake or we can say a bold layer if you can refer a data lake uh, document cool after that the same data i will be storing into this azure sql database or we can say azure data warehouse why i am saving into two uh, two storage or two uh, two uh, places because see data lake is something which cannot be accessible by end users they do not know how to write queries i mean how to import the data and other stuff okay but azure azure sql is something like sql is something like uh, you know everyone knows about it how to write simple statement like like a stuff from table and something something like that right that's that's the reason i am uh, i am dumping the data into azure sql or we can say azure sql they are we are data we are house and you might be also thinking in such way that many companies save the data or prepare prepare a azure sql i mean not azure a data warehouse things you know to store the data the history data and other stuff okay this is what and then what i will be doing i will be creating a power bi out of my published data which is stored in azure sql and uh, and published data lake okay and i will be creating some reports i will be getting some graph and visual other stuff cool now you might be seeing that we have this excel file and i did not talk about this so this is the excel file which will be coming from the blob storage okay from the blob storage and what we will we will be doing is that see we have published the data into azure sql cool we have published the data in azure sql so it has some tables like suppose we have two three tables in it and every table has some data now in this excel file we will be having uh, the ids or the uh, yeah we will be having id and the name of the person which with which whom i need to send the data suppose in 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 one fact table i will be having uh, a data related to me so what i am saying to you he hey sagar hey sagar i want my data after publishing or after reception the data i need only my data and in this fact table in the final table i will be having i will be having all of data like my data my friend data my colleague data and other data since i need only my data so what i will be doing i will be sending a email with excel files or we can say a csv file with with having only my data so that i will go and check what is the you know what is the data of mine and you know whether i am i am in a profit or i am in a loss or something like that okay based on business logics okay this is what now we will see what is the process and requirement see first we will be loading the data from different sources with different type of data let's say blob will having excel files and pdf azure sql database will having two tables cool Azure Data Lake Gen Two will having one zip folder and one CSV file, and then we have API. Okay, with whom we, where we need to fetch the data. 
After that, we have dump, like we have to dump above mentioned data into Gen2 law container device. Device means if we are today, so we have to first create a folder of today's and then we have to dump the files. And if we are running tomorrow, uh, fi uh, that job tomorrow, so in tomorrow's folder, I should have that data. Okay. Then we have uh, cleanse the data and create uh, create cleanse data table. Okay. In the second point, see, it is up to us how we maintain the delta lake structure. What we can do also, we can create a one single folder and we can append the date file or date date file. We can say date date name with the with the file so that we will identify which is the which which date data. Okay, In, no not no need to create a folder. Okay, since we will be having only single single file for each of the sources, so it's better to app, to append the to, uh, date with the file name so that we will also understand cool then what we will be doing in the third point we will be cleaning the data and create cleanse delta table what i told you and then we will create a fact tables dimension based on business logic and save the data into azure data lake gen 2 which i just explained you and then publish the data into publish gen 2 layer and azure sql data warehouse create power bi report show required graph Send publish data to respective owners based on given Excel files and then create CICD pipelines to for the deployment purpose. Cool. This is what I what I told you before. Now we will see what should be followed. Validate the data between source and sync. If something wrong happens, we have to send the emails, we have to send the alerts to the end users or maybe the source team that you know this data is not correct. Please resend the new data with the correct format. Then send alerts with when data is wrong or junk, data quality checks we have to implement. Then we have to send alerts when pipeline gets failed or succeeded or cancelled, whatever the case. Then use minimum resources as much as possible. Use frameworks which can be used in other projects too. So basically we have to create a utility so that the same thing which we can also be using in the different projects or upcoming projects. We should not you know, see every time when we are creating a project in our companies, our organization, we should always think in such a way that, you know, if I'm working today and tomorrow something happens, like if some new requirements come, so I can integrate those things into the existing thing. I should not write the same code from the sketch, sketch purpose, right? Then we have list of services tools which will be used. So we have ADF. We will be using ADF, we will be using Azure Data Breaks, Logic App, PySpark, SQL, Python, Spark SQL. We will be using Automation Runbook to uh, to automate some stuff. Let's say we have server which is running which is running 24 hours. But I do not need it, right? So I need only when I when I uh, when I am going to publish or you know dump the data into the Azure SQL database or data warehouse at that time only I have to I I I have to up the database otherwise I have to shut down my database or maybe you know in in non-business hour I have to shut down my database otherwise it will cost a lot then we have Azure SQL database Azure Synapse then we have Azure Blob Storage we will be using then we will be using Azure Data Link Gen 2 also and then we will be using Power BI to create reports or dashboard. And then I will be using Azure DevOps. Cool. Azure DevOps for CICD purpose, like to deploy the course from one place to another. And then we have this API, ALS.co API. Okay. I will be uh, I will be copying API lines data. So I will show you how we can register the thing, things and how we can how we can create the API and how will be how we how we can use it. So this is what I'm I just told you, I just explained you. I will be covering all this stuff. And if you are like fresher and if you are like uh, understanding this thing till now, then please take this course and it is not gonna be very expensive and I'm hundred percent sure that you will learn a lot from this course. It this is not a very simple simple project. Although it is a simple project, the data quite quite not very big. Okay, but the concept which we are going to tell you is that that is kind of real time real time scenarios. Not is not not only those those minor project related things or which is all the project which is already present. Okay, so I hope like you have understood and please 
watch out my next video please take my course okay so that you will have the better understanding of this complete project thank you we will meet you in the next lecture bye bye